DDT, as we all know, is a huge problem in the United States. Approximately 2 million DVTs are found annually. Of these, about 300,000 go on to embolize to the lungs, which we call pulmonary embolus. And DVTs in general, they have the acute state where people worry about pulmonary embolism, and that's where the focus is. But there's also the second part of the game, which is called post-thrombotic syndrome. And that's the effect on the leg of a blood clot after all the acuity has left. Meaning, we've treated the blood clot with anticoagulation. Now we follow the patients six months, a year, five years down the road, and they have debilitating leg symptoms from valve damage of the deep venous system, post-thrombotic syndrome. 15, 20 years ago, the treatment for deep vein thrombosis was hospitalization, bed rest, and intravenous heparin. And people were hospitalized for seven days with a DVT, then they would go out on Coumadin. The new paradigm shift with DVT is involving proximal DVT, so in blood clots that involve the popliteal vein and go cephalad or north involving the femoral vein, common femoral vein, or iliac veins, these DVTs are now amenable to pharmacomechanical thrombolysis. There are new devices on the market. One is the trellis device, the other is the possus device. The idea is these are rotor rooter type devices, catheter based, that go inside of the vein, inside of the clot, and use a combination of pharmaco, which is lytic therapy, TPA, and mechanical thrombolysis. So, Typically, they'll have some type of device mounted to the catheter that can macerate clot in addition to treating it chemically. People with femoral popliteal or iliofemoral deep vein thrombosis should be considered for more aggressive treatment, catheter-based pharmacomechanical thrombolysis. Deep vein thrombosis has been ignored. It's getting a lot of awareness now. People with clots in the thigh, in the femoral vein, or north of that in the uh, iliac vein should be considered for more aggressive treatment.